Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another review video. This time it's a uh, second review for Andenstar. They sent me like a really nice digital microscope quite a while ago and it's actually sitting on my, my bench that I work on and uh, I've been using that guy for, it's probably been about like, I don't know, maybe a year or two that I've had that and I actually use that pretty often. Uh, so it's definitely getting its use, especially inspecting solder joints and that kind of stuff. So when they asked me if I wanted to review a new model that they had, I was definitely interested, especially since this is more of a budget model. It has most of the features of the other model, the other one being the AD407, I believe. Uh, this guy is the AD207, but it's very similar, uh, only missing maybe a couple features that may or may not even be important to you. But this guy, uh, the other model I believe was above the $200 range. This guy is currently, you can see right here, originally $150. It's currently on sale for $140. So yeah, in like underneath the, the $140 range, not that bad. So yeah, this will do most things that the other one will do. I'll show you in a sec. But yeah, box is pretty plain. You'll get into this. 200 times magnification, SD card recording, it does HD video, etc., etc., has built in lights. It'll pretty much do everything you need. So let's just get into it. And we have the uh, instruction manual. It's pretty clearly illustrated. It looks nice enough. It'll do the job. So, yeah, we have some protective foam. It does come with its own AC adapter. And this guy is oh god what is that five volts at two amps there you go five volts two amps so yeah comes with its own adapter that's really nice just a usb adapter you can actually plug this in and i have done this before just plug it into a power bank a usb power bank and you have a portable wireless microscope digital microscope so that's great has very interestingly enough exactly the same as the other unit this um like power control pendant it has a power button and then brightness up and down for the onboard leds the other end it has a full-size usb port for power it has a micro port that goes into the microscope and then into the base with the lights is this dc barrel jack so yeah and this is decently long enough so it, it does break out into sort of a little squiddy with three arms and the usb cord is the longest and that's uh about five feet long and then the other two cords are only about like a little over a foot long so you're supposed to keep this pendant part near the microscope itself but yeah plenty long enough comes with an ir remote which is really nice so that you don't have to touch there are buttons on the microscope but i find that when you're really zoomed in uh, when you go to click the buttons it'll jar the image, uh, which isn't great. So they give you a remote with every button that you could need, as well as some shortcuts that aren't on the unit itself. And this is just a standard IR remote, it takes two AAA batteries, lasts forever practically. And it, it's nice, nice aesthetic kind of uh, ergonomic. You can also start and stop recording from the remote. So you don't even have to touch the microscope beyond uh, adjusting the zoom once and that's it. We have the actual microscope itself, which is just one unit, and everything on board. So, we have a 7-inch display, and I believe this is decently high resolution, the display. And we have the zoom adjustment here, and it's there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, probably... Those are only about half turns, so probably like three or four full revolutions of adjustment. So it's it's significant, uh, and I believe they they state the working distance, which is the distance between the tip and the base, like the focal point on the base. I think they they said it was like a couple inches, probably like five inches or so uh, at its maximum. So this is actually pretty decent for soldering. The lens doesn't have to be right up against what you're soldering. It gives you a little bit of work room. And interestingly enough, there's some sort of plastic collet that was not on the other microscope that I have. So I'm wondering what that's about. I guess we'll find out in a sec. This does very nicely have a UV filter that just threads on. And this is metal and glass. I'm not 
I'm going to try not to touch that, so I'm not going to get my fingerprints all over it. But yeah, uh, it has a slightly green tint when I hold it up to the light. I can't quite get it in frame. There. Yeah, there you go. You just saw it's sort of greenish, it looks. Uh, so this will reflect UV light. Uh, and apparently, not just that, it'll also, if you're soldering under it, uh, it'll keep the fumes from getting onto the actual optic lens underneath, uh, which would be very difficult to clean. You can see it's sort of like a pinhole. It's a very narrow lens within there. There we go. Uh, sort of like within that straw, it's up in there. And on top of it, this model has LEDs around the um, the camera itself. The other unit that I reviewed did not have built-in LEDs there. It had separate gooseneck flex LEDs, which this also has. Uh, but I like the idea that you can have kind of two sets of, or I guess three sets of LEDs that are all independently configurable. And yeah, just have a little sticker here with the uh, C and FCC rings, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. At the top, we have uh, the micro USB, and that's going to be for power. We have three LEDs, uh, probably just power indication. There's no internal battery on this, so it needs power externally. We have a micro SD card slot, and that's it. Um, it looks like on the other unit that I have, the more expensive model, there is a micro HDMI port on here, so you can plug in an external monitor. Uh, this guy does not have that port. So it's a nice feature to have, uh, to be able to plug in an external monitor um, just to get an even bigger screen on here. But the 7-inch monitor, on, honestly, is, is decent enough that if you don't need that feature, this will save you easily 100 bucks off the more expensive model. And yeah, that's about it. Just uh, we have a wheel here, which I'm guessing is the changing the intensity of the ring LED. We have the IR sensor, and then we have some silver buttons. And yeah, they're just tactile clicky buttons, and there's six of them for uh, power, menu, up, down, OK, and then a record, like a camera button for recording, starting and stopping recording. And we have the protective film. Uh, we're going to pull that off in a second. Yeah, there's some warnings here about... Uh, don't press on the display, you can damage it, etc., etc. And there is some articulation, actually, quite a bit of articulation on the actual camera itself, uh, 180 degrees, in fact. So, yeah, you can adjust the viewing angle on this pretty well, and left to right as well, because, you know, the, the collet mount fully rotates. So, yeah, uh, let's get into the rest of it. So we have a bag with some mounting hardware. And an Allen key. This is for like a slide holder on the base. It's uh, it's tapped with some holes to accept this. Uh, I removed this. I on on the other model I had. I think I either removed it or I just never attached it. This isn't really useful for like electronic soldering and that kind of stuff. So yeah, but it's nice that it comes with it in case you actually wanted to use this to look at like biological slide samples or something. The zoom factor on this is only like I said, two hundred times. So you're not. This isn't the same as like a, a biology microscope that you can look at cells with. It's not going to go nearly that deep, probably off by like a, an order of magnitude. But this is good enough for like soldering inspection, like I said, or if you're doing some tiny assembly work. We have a aluminum mount, which is very nicely made. And this is what actually attaches to both the base as well as the... Um, the microscope itself. And it has thumb screws with plastic, a blue piece of plastic on the end so it doesn't mar it, uh, but you can still tighten it. I really like that. I really, really like the um, this adjustment knob for the vertical height. It's very firm. There's actually a thumb screw in the back that you can loosen as well. And then it, it's all loosey goosey, and then you can set varying. You can tighten it way down so that you can't adjust it, or just snug it up, and then it'll provide just enough friction that you can scroll this up and down. It won't slip down on its own due to gravity, but you can still adjust it. So that's fantastic. There's another looks like a, um, a thumb wheel or something on the bottom here, which I believe will allow you to loosen the base so that you can slide the whole arm up and down a little bit. And we have finally another axis of adjustment. Uh, there's a hinge here. You can 
move this up and down uh, with respect to the base. And speaking of which, we have the base here. And yeah, everything, like I said, is solid metal. This is very well made. Uh, and even the base itself, this one's a little bit smaller than the other model that I have, uh, but definitely still big enough to do most things. We have, let's see, both of the kind of worm lights. <laughs> if you've ever had like an old school Game Boy, these will look very familiar uh, in order to play in the dark. But yeah, these are LEDs. Each one has a, a single LED inside as well as a pretty nice lens and like reflective cup. And these are very configurable. I can, let's just get that in frame. I can put this at any angle that I want, point it at any spot that I want. And yeah, these are great. Base itself is anodized something. I'm guessing aluminum. It's quite thick. Decently weighty. It's not going to fall over on its own. And it's got pretty decent uh, large rubber feet, non-skid. And yeah. Pretty good on all fronts there. Uh, it looks like, actually, two of the screws to attach the uh, the arm onto the base are in here. So it looks like I am going to need this Allen key. Yeah, and like I said, um, the base has its own power input from a DC jack from the uh, power cord. So that'll just go in there. These are the two tapped holes for the, um, like the uh, microscope slide clips. Don't need those. I'm going to loosen these so I can insert. And I guess that's what this collet's for, actually. There is some, like, lubricant or something on there. It's hard to see. But, yeah, I'm guessing you're supposed to screw to this so that you can still rotate the entire display easily. Okay, all we have to do now is plug in the micro USB on the top here. And that just clips in. That's a right angle plug, which is really nice, so... From the front, you don't see any cords sticking out. And we have the pendant here. It would have been nice, I think, in my opinion, if they had some kind of clip onto the side where you can clip this or maybe put a magnet or something so it just sort of sits kind of to the side but is attached somewhat. Uh, that would have been nice. So, yeah, um, I'm actually going to... I, I guess we've waited long enough on this, so let's just pull this guy ASMR time. Okay, you guys ready? There's actually two, two films on mine for some reason, but yeah, let's get it. There we go. Just put that to the side there. And yeah, here we go. It's, it's actually three, there's three screen protectors on here. What? Uh, you can see the plastic film from that, huh? Let me just pull that off. I'm probably going to need tweezers. There's no pull tab on here. Give me one sec. Okay, so I pulled off all three screen protectors. I don't know why there was three of them, but yeah. You can see they used a glossy screen. On the higher-end model, it's um, actually a matte screen, which I, I prefer the matte screens. Uh, this will much easier show fingerprints or dust. Uh, but while the screen's on, you're probably not even going to notice it. And the unit just came on as well. It does have time stamping. Let's uh, focus. Yeah, it does a time stamp and date if you wanted it to. Uh, it says it's in standby audio. There's a mic symbol there. Uh, you can turn on and off audio recording. Uh, it says FHD 30p, so I'm guessing 30 frames a second, full HD, so 1080p it's set to. It's in video recording mode. Sorry about that. Uh, it's in video recording mode. It's saying there's no memory card inserted. And then there's also a battery symbol. Oddly enough, I don't, I wasn't aware that this had an internal battery. Uh, for instance, if I pull the, uh, the USB power input, it turns right off. And yeah, I don't know if maybe they might have intended or a different model has an internal battery. But that is sort of odd that it has a battery charging symbol there and yet no battery. But yeah, you can just adjust this up and look at something. There we go. That's my thumbnail there. You can adjust both of the, the lights to... And you can see it's actually... The focus is kind of razor sharp. You can even change the focal plane to focus on kind of the foreground or the background. You can see the... Uh, 
the base is in focus, you can see the anodization, but my fingernail is out of focus, and then I can switch to the top of my, my fingernail, and um, I can even see sort of my fingerprints. So yeah. So I guess the only thing left to do is uh, to grab a bunch of things to look at underneath uh, magnification. So yeah, let me get a bunch of stuff and uh, we'll sort of do like a fun science-y exploration video to wrap this up. And then I'll give you guys my finding on this unit. Okay, so I played around a little bit. I Hopefully I showed you quite a number of uh, like different display technology. I thought that would be really interesting to see uh, different like OLED and LCD displays, zoom in on them and try to capture like the individual pixels lit up. I thought that would be interesting to see because there's quite a number of arrangements and even the sizing between the red, green and blue pixels differ depending on what the display is. And uh, yeah, I thought that'd be interesting. Sorry, I uh, originally intended to use the onboard SD card to capture. Uh, I'm currently packing to move and I don't know where any blank SD cards are and I don't want to have to erase ones that I'm already currently using. So I did the best thing I could, which was just took a picture using this camera uh, of the screen. So it, it's not as clear as it would have been if I just captured it internally and saved it directly to an SD card. But yeah, unfortunately, I, the house is kind of a mess right now and I don't have the time to really look through a bunch of stuff uh, to try and find a random, like proverbial needle in a haystack blank SD card. Anyway, uh, that aside, uh, this guy works pretty decently. I would say it's about on par with the uh, AD407 that I actually have on my bench that I use every day. Uh, this actually has the added feature of having a ring light, uh, which under certain circumstances does help Im immediate. Like you can see the immediate difference. This is just the, uh, these little tentacle LED arms. But as soon as I turn on the uh, LED light, you can see definitely like the surface of the anodized uh, metal there. Uh, so I can definitely see how that would come in handy. It has uh, a UV filter, which actually does seem to like cut down on glare a little bit. I like the addition of the adjustable ring light. That's really cool. Uh, these arms are really useful. You can actually angle the light exactly to whatever position you need. Um, I would say the HDMI output, not having it on this model versus the 8407, the upgraded, more expensive model. I would say not everyone needs that. If you want to hook it up to an external monitor, then you're going to have to pay for that feature. But if you only want to use this to inspect using this onboard screen or recording direct to an SD card, you really don't need that. It's a luxury. So it's sort of whether you want to spend the money or save the money and... Um, just live without the HDMI output. Menu system is uh, is decent enough to figure out. The menu button will just cycle you through 
uh, video photo and then viewing video or photo. And I believe, yeah, if you press and hold it, you can get into the settings menu and you press up down to, to go into the menus or you press OK to enter the menu to change the setting or you click the menu button again to go to the next tab and then you click it again to exit. Uh, it's pretty self-intuitive. Um, the icons, I will say, if I, if I wanted to ask them to improve something, uh, the icons are a bit small, especially like these in the corner here. They're very kind of difficult to see in all honesty. So if they could maybe outline them in white or like do what subtitles do to, to increase contrast or make them just a little bit bigger, I get that they didn't want to make them so distracting that you, you would take up real estate on the screen. But I mean, even like the date and time here in the bottom, this is plenty large enough and well visible. Unless if you're looking at like a yellow piece of paper that, that would tend to wash out. But yeah, I would say I would prefer if they maybe made the icons a little bit bigger. Uh, in terms of the remote, the remote is fantastic. Do not lose this remote. It's definitely way easier to, to be looking at something and to just like the digital zoom um, without having to actually physically touch. Now, obviously this is digital zoom, so you generally don't want to have to rely on this. You want to zoom down optically as much as you can and then use this. But yeah, you can do other useful things. You can adjust the uh, exposure uh, digitally via the remote without having to physically bump or move this if you're going to be trying to catch something that's like very delicate that uh, if you so much as breathe on it, it'll move and it'll ruin the shot. So yeah, overall, I think this was like about 150-ish. Um, for what you're getting, I think that's definitely worth it. The more expensive model, um, with the HDMI out, I believe that's like a bit over 200, probably like 250, I think last I checked. That's asking a bit much, uh, for, for that amount of money, mm, you might have to actually seriously think if you might as well just get like a used professional microscope, uh, but then you won't get any of the video kind of fanciness in that case. Uh, but yeah, for like 150, definitely, this is sort of a no-brainer. If you do a lot of soldering and you need to like inspect stuff or take some like nice promotional pictures of like very small things, uh, definitely uh, look and in Star Up. I will have links down below uh, to their listing as well as their site. If you want to check out, they have larger models. This is the 7-inch model. That I believe they sell like up to like 10 or 12-inch models, which is kind of crazy. I like that, but those are quite a bit more expensive but you know if, if it's something that you need it's something that you need anyway uh once again huge thanks to and star for sending this guy in for people in in my kind of line of business where you know you're going to be hand assembling a lot of pcbs this is definitely invaluable i can't tell you how many times i soldered something it didn't work and then i took it under the microscope and i could see just like a little tiny solder bridge that was barely touching two of the pins that i just missed by just by eye inspection and I was able to to narrow it down to that. And it only took like two seconds to desolder that bridge and then fix it. And then it works. <laughs> you can see the uh, working space there of having the surface in focus. We get pretty decent working space. Anyway, uh, once again, huge thanks to Andinstar. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.